coming up, by the way, 100,000 non-citizens registered to vote in Pennsylvania. Now that can affect the outcome of an election. Not the Russians, but this. It's a Washington Times story. We'll have it coming up. And also went back to the archives and found it was last June that I predicted Mueller would go fishing for Trump's finances pre-presidential run. But let's start with Jim in Naperville, Illinois. I'm glad you called. You're up first today. It's a it's an awesome responsibility to be the first caller. I mean, you got to set the tone for everybody that follows. Maha Rusty, I hope I could raise to the occasion. Uh, I uh, I am a uh, paying towards a lifetime membership with the NRA. I pay twenty five dollars a month. I do not have a fire. I don't own a firearm. I don't uh, I don't have a FOI card, uh, a firearms owners card yet. I hope to soon, uh, trying to raise money for it. And in that, I, I uh, am interested in the Dick's uh, Sporting Goods position. Uh, I've called them today and talk, had a very pleasant conversation with one of their managers and uh, to let them know that I will not be going to Dick's because of the position that they've taken on the uh, against the Second Amendment, in my mind. Uh, and now they're free to do to sell whatever they want to whoever they want. But I have the uh, I have the same freedom to, to uh, go to someone else if they're going to limit the age and the type of firearm that they're going to sell. And I have uh, teenage uh, children that I'm worried about their Second uh, Second Amendment rights first. And that's why I have a membership in the NRA first. And then uh, because without that, without protecting our Second Amendment rights, uh, you're not going to be able to buy the gun when the time comes. And uh, so I don't appreciate them raising their age to 21 and uh, restricting the type of firearm and, and ammunition that they could sell. Well, this is a classic. By the way, you, you, when did you join the NRA? About a year ago. And you, but you don't have a gun, and you, you don't intend to anytime real soon. But you, you wanted to join anyway because of the work they do protecting the civil liberties involved in the Second Amendment, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's go to the Dick's Sporting Goods guy. The CEO there is. Uh, let's see. His name is Ed Stack, and he was on Good Morning America today with George Stephanopoulos. To talk about Dick's sporting goods decision to stop selling assault style rifles and to limit the age of buyers to 21. Stephanopoulos' question Dick's will no longer sell assault style rifles, no longer sell firearms to anybody under 21, no longer sell high capacity magazines. This is a dramatic move. Why are you making this move at Dick's? We were so disturbed and saddened by what happened, we felt we really needed to do something. And uh, so we've uh, decided not to sell these assault weapons any longer in any of our stores and the other things that we talked about. He bought a a shotgun from us back in uh, November, and it wasn't the gun, nor it was the type of gun that he used in the shooting. But when that happened, we realized that the system, and we did everything by the book. We did everything that the law required, and still he was able to buy a gun. And when we looked at that, we said, the systems that are in place across the board just aren't effective enough to keep us from selling someone a gun like that. And so we've decided that uh, we're not going to sell the assault type rifles. Okay, Mr. Stack, uh, I, I hope this gets back to you. When you talk about you did everything that the law required and still the shooter was able to get a gun from Dick's Sporting Goods. And when you looked at that, you said the systems that are in place across the board just aren't effective enough to keep us from selling someone a gun like that. This guy's upset that this shooter was able to pass a background check. Now, do you think that CEO Ed Stack of Dick's Sporting Goods understands why? Do you think he has the slightest idea why Nicholas Cruz was not caught in his background check? Do you think he has ever heard of the Promise program? Do you think the CEO of Dick's Sporting Goods has ever heard of the Obama Eric Holder program that paid local police departments and sheriff's departments and schools not to report crime, arrest crime committed by, well, pretty much anybody, felonies, misdemeanors, in the in, in in the youthful area of age when they're young, 
Do you think this guy understands the reason for this? Was the Obama holder belief and the general belief held by the American left that the prison populations, which have a very high percentage of minorities and African Americans, Obama and Holder believe that's because of racism and bigotry that a lot of innocent people have been incarcerated because America is an injustice. America is immoral. And so they passed this thing called the Promise Act, and it basically exempts young people who've committed crime. They're not apprehended. They're not arrested so that they don't end up as a statistic involving prison or jail. And this is designed to lower the percentage of minorities and African Americans. But the reason it works is the the sheriff, the local police, the school boards are all given grant money to make sure this policy was adhered to. So the reason that Dick's Sporting Goods was unable to deny this guy his purchase is because this guy In all of these warnings and in all of these instances that people knew he was going to crack, he wasn't in the background check system because he had not been recorded as such. He had not been arrested. He had not been dealt with. Do you think the CEO at Dick's Sporting Goods understands that? Or is he just trying to get in on what he thinks is a wave of popular opinion that he's trying to take advantage of and maybe misreading it a little bit. 